One of our greatest biographers has tackled one of the greatest athletes in the world, and it is a perfect match of author and subject. For nearly 30 years, David Marinus has written a series of acclaimed bestsellers for Simon & Schuster, including biographies of Bill Clinton, Vince Lombardi, Barack Obama, and Roberto Clemente, as well as a trilogy of works set in the 1960s about Detroit, Vietnam, and the Olympics. As a reporter for the Washington Post, he's won two Pulitzer Prizes. Some journalists are known for their aggressive reporting, and others are known for the quality of their writing. But what's unusual about David Marinus is that, like many of the athletes he's written about, he can do it all. He's an original stylist who also unearths revelations about his subjects. For years, I've wanted David to write another sports biography. I would ask, can't you do Bear Bryant? How about Ted Williams? David's longtime editor, Alice Mayhew, advised me to give David plenty of space to choose his own subject in his own time. He's an artist, she would tell me. Alice was deeply devoted to David and his work. She considered him one of the best pure writers she'd had the privilege of editing in her 50-year career. In 2019, Alice sent me one of her characteristically succinct emails, informing me of David's idea for his next book. All she wrote was, Jim Thorpe, the Olympics, the birth of the NFL and of baseball, and Native Americans. He is excited and eager to tell you all about it. He'll be here on February 5th. My knowledge of Jim Thorpe was limited to a book I'd read when I was a kid. He won two gold medals in the 1912 Olympics while also playing professional baseball, basketball, and football. The Associated Press named him the greatest athlete of the first half of the 20th century. Thorpe's athletic accomplishments have been well documented. What hasn't been covered quite as extensively until now is how he lived as a Native American, a member of the Sac and Fox Nation, and the pressures he felt throughout his extraordinary and groundbreaking career. Unfortunately, Alice Mayhew passed away before David turned in his manuscript. But as soon as his new editor, Bob Bender, said it was done, I requested an early copy and devoured it. I was fascinated and moved by what I read. Thorpe did not have an easy life. He was orphaned at age 16. He endured bigotry throughout his career. He was arbitrarily stripped of his gold medals by the Olympic bureaucrats. And after he stopped competing professionally, he struggled to earn a living, taking bit parts in Hollywood and digging ditches. His tremendous athletic gifts were first discovered by the legendary football coach Pop Warner at the Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Pennsylvania. His feats on the field made him so famous that he remains a legend to this day. There's a scene late in the book that stayed with me, and it captures the complexity of Thorpe's life and his legacy. After Thorpe's funeral in Oklahoma, his third wife, without telling the rest of his large family, sold his remains to two small towns that changed their name to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, and then erected a monument in his honor, even though Thorpe had never actually lived in either of those two towns. One day in 1974, Muhammad Ali was training in the area and decided that he wanted to visit the monument to pay his respects. After viewing the monument, Ali had just remarked, Jim Thorpe can finally rest now, when a couple recognized Ali and said, thank you for coming. Ali said, yeah, I just came to visit Jim Thorpe, to which one of the fans said, we paid $1,000 for this and no one comes here and all we've got is a dead Indian. Well, after Ali got back in the car with his manager, they drove in silence until Ali said, man, poor Jim Thorpe, even in death, he can't rest in peace. That's how life is. Yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery. That's the kind of reporting and storytelling that makes David Marinus a writer to read, and that's why I highly recommend Path Lit by Lightning. And that is the word according to Carl.